So who are the opposition fighters in Syria? Joseph Holliday is a senior research analyst at the Institute for the Study of War in Washington, D.C. Thanks very much for joining us. We heard from some of the fighters in Idlib there in Anita's report. Are you convinced uh, that al-Qaeda is not among the ranks of the opposition? Like they say, the Assad government is saying quite the opposite. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. But of, of course, the al-Qaeda is involved in Syria. There are linked groups uh, to al-Qaeda that, uh, that have been involved with the car bombs in both uh, Aleppo and Damascus. A group calling themselves the al-Nusra Front to protect the Levant claimed credit for those attacks. However, I, I don't get the sense that these groups are the leading force and the, uh, the most important groups. The most important groups fighting the opposition right now are, are these uh, ground, uh, these grassroots resistance fighters that, that your report just highlighted. Okay, your organization has just published a report uh, about the spread of armed groups in Syria. Which armed groups are you referring to? Well, this report that we published uh, talks about primarily the groups that are organized under the Free Syrian Army. These groups have, um, since the fall, become increasingly effective. They are very organized at the local level, and they have also had affiliated uh, and demonstrated affiliations to the Free Syrian Army headquarters in Turkey. It doesn't mean it's a, tr a traditional military chain of command. It's not but it does demonstrate uh, the propensity and the willingness for further organization in the future. But there's no clear line of command, is there, among uh, these uh, armed groups? How closely linked are they to the Free Syrian Army? What about the Syrian National Council? I'll take those questions separately. First of all, um, as far as clear lines, no, uh, insurgencies are inherently decentralized. And uh, the Free Syrian Army in Turkey, the headquarters there, does not provide any meaningful logistical support or tactical guidance for the units that operate autonomously. They have become an important brand name, though, and an organizing principle for a lot of the most effective groups uh, operating against the Assad regime in Syria. Regarding the Syrian National Council, the sense that I get from most of the reports coming uh, from the ground in Syria, from both the armed opposition fighters as well as the demonstrators, is that they don't recognize the Syrian National Council as their legitimate representatives. And I think that some of the recent splits that you've seen within that organization are, are an example of, of some of the problems that the Syrian National Council is having. Okay, Joseph, uh, before you go, where are these uh, armed groups, these, these fighters getting their weapons? Are there any signs mm -hmm. that they're being armed from forces outside? Up to this point, uh, the sense that I have is that these groups are arming themselves. They uh, mostly through black market uh, purchases uh, from smugglers from Lebanon and from Iraq, as well as from inside the country, uh, from both depots that the, the security forces in Syria themselves have, and well as small arms that defectors uh, bring with them. But again, it's just small arms. It's, uh, it's nothing more than RPGs and medium machine guns is the most that they're able to, uh, to get so far. That may change going forward, but up to this point, it seems to be the black market economics is driving the arms flows into Syria. All right, Joseph, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thanks for your time, Joseph Holliday, with the Institute for the Study of War. Thanks again.